as a father, a son, you think you're going to show him things, do things with, his, with him as a, as, a, as, a, as a young boy, as a teenager, and then into being a young man. But uh, for me, that's not going to happen. And we just want Jack to be as happy as possible and to be the best he can be, given the condition that he's got. She might have lived 20 months and six days, but she lived a lifetime. You know, the words terminal came in, the words palliative came in, and they're the answers that no parent would want to hear. Zia passed away on the 26th of September, 2019. No one could dream how horrible and challenging it must be to have a child that's not only seriously sick but potentially terminally ill. It's just not a facility here in Perth. So to create a facility to help those children and their families and their carers is just something that every West Australian that I've discussed it with uh, embraces and supports and, and is genuinely excited about. I'm really delighted to be able to announce a collaboration between Perth Children's Hospital Foundation and the Child and Adolescent Health Service to help build and develop the very first children's hospice in Western Australia. Families and carers of children that have got a life-limiting condition or where they are terminally ill will have a special facility by the water. Uh, where they can go, they can get some respite from either being in the hospital or being at, ho at home, and they can get the care they need 24-7. Uh, so we're delighted that we're in partnership with the government um, in this project, and, and our role is, is primarily as a funder. So we're going to be funding the, the pre-construction, the construction, and then we have an ongoing role, which we think is very exciting, to be a non-clinical operational funder of the facility, which essentially means we're able to provide things like food and beverage and entertainment and a lot of support for families and siblings and parents and grandparents. We uh, were given the opportunity to, to tour Bear Cottage over in Manly. Really blown away, just absolutely amazed at first the need for such a facility because it is of course quite confronting and challenging, very emotional. In my visit to Bear Cottage I think the thing that really stood out for me was how normal everything around the house was and how um, incredibly uh, emotionally charged the house was. If there was a service available that gave us the opportunity to know that he was well looked after, it wasn't hospital, um, it, would mean, it would mean a lot. So Jaden was born with complex congenital heart disease and de George syndrome. He has been chronically ill since the day he was born. It's, it's limiting and he still needs help and assistance with most daily tasks, dressing and showering and everything. If he was in a paediatric palliative care respite service, it would be really good to be able to go and be able to speak to people and have the kids be able to speak to somebody and to even just speak to other kids that to, to know it's okay and that it's okay to have some of these feelings that you have. It's going to be that nurturing environment, it's going to be safe, you'll have medical facilities there, but it will also potentially feel like a bit of a holiday, a little bit of a break by the water away from the hospital environment, away from a challenging home situation, giving the family a break and giving the sick child um, some respite, some, some quality, uh, potentially towards the end of a young life. I think it's uh, an important piece of the jigsaw that's been missing. So we have incredible clinical expertise that helps support families at present. But I think what we're lacking is the ability to take the clinical care we offer sometimes in a very sterile hospital environment and provide it in the environment which has the feel of a home. When we think about palliative care, I think we always immediately go to the terminal part of life. Actually, life is there to be celebrated and we're there to be with the children right from the point of diagnosis and we're there to support children and families through what we hope will be a celebration of life. I think it's absolutely um, brilliant that we can have um, the hospice being an outreach service from within the Child and Adolescent Health Service because it means that we will have expert staff 
across the whole range of staffing that know what they're doing, families can feel secure and we know that children will be well cared for. Families often feel very isolated. It's hard for them to talk about what they're going through and what they really want is to be able to connect with other families that understand what they're going through. An environment that you could go to, there was medical staff there that were compassionate. Um, the place was set up for people with wheelchairs or disabilities or complex medical needs. And you met other families, you just wouldn't feel so alone, you'd feel more comfortable we would be able to enjoy it more. My friends are amazing and they listen but they don't understand and so being with people that understand would be really good. It would have given me friends who fully understood what, it, what I was going through that I don't really have. While we chose Fazia to come home, had there been an option perhaps to have a transitional place, Perhaps we would have had that option to do that and her passing would have been different. Not more meaningful maybe, but for those memories. After Zia passed away, I felt very lost. I felt like I was drowning all over again. Um, and, and not because palliative care weren't able to do what they were able to, there was just not enough that they could have done, you know, because they were limited in their own way. And having facilities and resources like that would just speak bounds to not just the journey to, but the journey after as well, which I've lived. In bereavement, currently, the services that are available are quite ad hoc for families. So I think to provide a, a central bereavement service would really be very, very beneficial to families in WA and we know that that's one of the things that they're asking for. I see this nirvana really as a hospice uh, paradise and a place where people can be to just be, to just be and to just live and enjoy and savour and you know, embody that whole concept of what palliative care stands for. People worry about a hospice, it's all about sadness and it's all about death and dying and actually it, it, there's a lot of laughter and banter and it will be really, really, um, it'll be beautiful and noisy and like a family. Mums can be mums, not mums and nurses and speech therapists and physios. I can't wait for it to open and to have a house that is like a home, that has the smell of family cooking, that has the voice of childhood, that has adults laughing and talking and that there are areas where families can be families knowing that they're safe. It will be amazing. We had good times when we when we're small, we've got good times now, but they're different times. There is no cure for what he has. He still has a really chronic health condition, but I think we've given him the chance to be able to have the best quality of life that he can. The whole essence of it is living. It isn't dying. That, that, was, that was a part of it, but a very small part of it. The bigger picture is living you know, the life that we have and making the most of it.